Hi, I'm Monty McKinnon. Thank you for joining me. I'm really pleased you're here today. What we're going to do today is a lot of stuff. Now, I honestly bite off more than I can chew. I don't know if I can get all of this done in one session, but I will try. If not, we'll have to make this a two-part video, but you need to see we're at the point where I want to put the frets on the fingerboard, but that involves several steps, and I'll talk about those just as soon as we spin the intro, and I'll be right back. All right, I am back. Thank you for sticking with me. Now, here's what we have to do. The first thing I have done is I have taken a saw and I have gone into the slots to make sure that all the sawdust and everything is out of those slots. We're going to fill them with more sawdust, but I'd like to start clean and know where I'm at. So what happens here is I'm going to put a compound radius on the board, on the fingerboard. I'm going to come down here at a 20 foot radius and then I'm going to go into a 16 foot radius down somewhere in around here. I've got two white marks on this fingerboard indicated here, which is going to show me uh, about where the transition will be. So I'm sanding that. I've got these discs, these blocks that I've got with the radius already carved in them. I got these from Stumac. And no, they're not sponsors, but you can get them there. Once we've done that, 20 down here, and we've done the 16 up here, what I do is I use these, are those small needle files, and these are the triangle files. And the reason for that is once I have the curvature on here, I will then take this file, and I will simply go into the slot and very gently go back and forth until I make it nice and smooth, so that I put an edge on it. I don't want the slot coming in here like this and then going straight down. I want it like this. The reason for that is at some point, once I'm long gone, somebody may decide they want to replace these frets. Well, if they do that and, and I have this edge camfered like that, when they pull it out by taking a pair of nippers like this and putting it on the edge of the fret and pulling it up, it won't splinter the fingerboard and you can do a, a fret change very easily. So you got to be careful uh, because I, I do hit this with some, yes, Starbond CA glue, just in different spots. So you need to put on their debonder to let that wick into the slot in order to pull the frets out if you're going to do that. But I want to make sure I get this right. So what I have here is this is 16, so I will put this on here, making sure that I have a 16 foot radius there, and this one is a 20, and I can put it down there and make sure I've got the 20 there as well. Now, once we've done that, and it comes time to put the frets in, that's really complicated, okay, in one sense. In another sense, it's not so complicated. There's the fret wire, we're going to use this, this fret wire. This is plenty of wire here. And we're going to cut the fret wire into little pieces that are a little longer than what we need on the fretboard. And I'm going to place them in this block of wood. Now, this is simply a block of wood where I've drilled some holes and I've numbered 1 through 21. You could do 22 if you want, or depending on what you're building. So when I cut the frets, I stick them in this board because once they're all done, I then take those, I have to use these nippers, and then I'm going to nip off the tang that hangs down from the fret. So the fret is like a T. It's round over the top here with a piece that comes down. That's the piece that goes in the slot, and on the side of that, are little knobs that stick out like my finger is right now, and then that's what holds it in place. So we're going to cut that down part off just at the edge 
so that it will just reach over the side of fretboard or the fingerboard here and then we will cut it again and then we'll file it on about a 30-35 degree angle. This is a 20 radius. Oh no, 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 that's the 16. Oh, that's really good. Oh, that just fits perfect. All right, now let's take a piece of this and I can show you what we do here. We'll do the first fret. Here's the fret wire. Yeah, it's plenty long, all right. This gets clamped in here. This is another jig that I made. So what I have now is I have the fret with the wire hanging down but I've nipped off the very ends and then I've sanded or filed up to make this perfectly flat so that this will fit over top. There we go. Now, in order to put this fret in, I have a choice. I can use this. This is a little piece that I bought at Stumac. And I have the disc here, which is the same radius as this. This will fit into the drill press, and then I will crank the drill press down, and it will press it into place. Or, if you don't have a drill press, and you don't have one of these, you probably have a hammer. This is a little dead blow hammer, so we will use this. I'm using it on the plastic side. And that seems to fit perfect. Now I'll just nip the edge and there you have it. That fret is in. It's down perfectly flat on the radius all along the side here. And I only have to do that another 20 times. So it is time for me now to celebrate having one fret in. If I do this 21 times, I'll be waterlogged by the time I get to the end of the fingerboard. But this is my English breakfast. Oh, actually, this is Yorkshire tea. And it's a decaf tea. And it comes from Yorkshire, England. And it is so stinking good. I'm telling you, it really is good tea. Tailors are the ones who make it. All right, that's it. Thank you for joining me. I'm glad you were here. All right, we'll see you in the next video. Bye for now.